Our final and tenth presentation is from Mr. Daisuke Kubo, Mr. Hiroki Yoko Yokoyama, and Ms. Kaori Yasuzawa. Please start. You must be tired, by the way. I can see from your face, but <laughs> we are more tired than you. No problem. Just wait 10 minutes. We have pretty much confidence. Where our presentation is the most one of the meaningful time in your life. I have a simple question. Do you like, do you like sports? Thank you. I hope everyone does. It was really exciting of Japanese national rugby team's breakthrough in first round matches in World Cup, wasn't it? <laughs> thank you, thank you. By the way, can anyone guess what's the meaning behind 36.2%? This is a percentage of disabled people who play sports in the year. For non-disabled groups, this is around 80%. How can we then interpret such a big, huge difference between disabled and non-disabled groups? Clearly, something has to change in order to encourage athletic participation for disabled groups. Why are disabled people marginalized in the sporting community? Unfortunately, there are lots of problems within the field of Paralympic sports. We wonder why and how it happens. In the end, we identified one big problem. This is our apathy. This is illustrated by the government's lack of funding to improve Paralympic sports, because during election, almost nobody actively speak up. Furthermore, companies have a much fewer incentive to sponsor the Paralympic sports, especially in comparison with the major sports. This is precisely because of the lack of viewership of advertising during the Paralympic sporting events. By already being marginal, the Paralympic sports seem irrelevant to the greater public, thus creating low viewership and attendance. This also led to the shortage of volunteers during the power sports competitions, shortage of the coaches, as well as having few suitable facilities in which to play para sports. Parasports athletes also have a hard time finding these sponsors, thus shortening or complicating their careers. Apathy, therefore, truly doesn't have the parasports community to thrive. Today's proposal focuses on the sustainable development of parasports. The goal is to create a friendly environment for disabled people to play sport as well focusing on the accessibility of para sports for greater public. We suggest a project named Project Me. This is designed to bring public awareness to Paralympic sports in order to include greater public. The problem of para sports should not be marginalized. Rather, it should be about all of us, about me. This plan clearly serves to create a sense of ownership in order to tackle down the apathy. It has two important outreach programs. Firstly, the M signifies the media strategy. You know, the media is incredibly effective too in redefining the public opinions. NHK, Japanese national, own, Japanese national broadcasting media and owns exclusive rights, has previously broadcasted Parasports event, paras, Paralympic community, par, uh, Parasports <laughs> only for one year, a one hour during the Olympic Games. And only 2.9% of people who have watched par, Paralympic sports game on the internet. Therefore, we suggest the media campaign for the Paralympic. We suggest that NHK creates an information framework exclusively for Paralympic sports. We suggest, of course, the NHK extend the broadcasting time of Paralympic sports. Furthermore, an online presence of Paralympic community on the NHK's website will be crucial for its accessibility. 
by having live stream or the Paralympic Games or the background information about the Paralympians, the viewership will most likely increase. This has been a positive strategy for the London Paralympic 2012, where the British media, Channel 4, had a similar campaign. Sadly, only 14% of the population said they were looking forward to the event before it started. Surprisingly, 64% of the population said the Paralympic was as good as the Olympic. What it implies is that once people watch Paralympic Games, they are very likely to be interested in it. That's why this is an essential first step to make people interested in it. But secondly, what we'd like to suggest is to ask every single person here to share information about the Paralympic on social media, like Facebook or Twitter. Any media matter, whether it be like promotion video of the Paralympics or the pictures or an interesting article. Sharing will raise awareness for the more intimate audience comprised of families and friends. We hope that the Paralympic can be promoted through social media as well. This is Project M, which allows more and more people to actively engage in the Paralympic through media. Our second program, Project E, focuses on education. The goal is to provide opportunities for greater audience to interact with the Paralympic community. We suggest the Ministry of Education include a program introducing Paralympics to children within the school education. All the students should be able to learn and try these sports for themselves. This is because Paralympics do not require the physical disability to be played. More importantly, the majority of disabled people get disability at some point in our lives, not when they are born. This means every single child has a possibility to get disability. This is the literally about me. In this class, students can try the simple parasports such as blindfolded soccer and vulture as a part of their physical education. And we hope these sports will be included in sports festival, which you know kind of unique element of Japanese education. By educating children this way, children can learn what is entailed to play power sports. Actually, when I was a primary school student, I played gateball, which is kind of a sport for elderly people. Before doing it, I didn't understand why I had to do that and how it is so exciting. But once I played it, I realized how it was so exciting. Similarly, although it might be difficult or might be unnatural for children, throughout direct experiences, children can realize how exciting to play power sport it is. The British philosopher Thomas Carlyle once said, experiences teaches better than the best teacher. Ladies and gentlemen, we have pretty much confidence our project me will make 2020 Tokyo Paralympic with successful events. The M stands for awareness and E stands for the, uh, interesting. We can create the sustainable development of power sports. To conclude, I'd like to dedicate this presentation to an elementary school friend who has this ability. I still really regret that I couldn't include him very like very sports. So I hope I can make a difference in raising awareness for the for the disabled community. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to ribbon the world where the Paralympic sports become one major part of our sporting culture. I want to ribbon the world where we, all of us are excited about the Paralympic as well as the Olympic. I want to live in the world where disabled children and non-disabled children can enjoy playing sports together. To show your support to our Project Me, please share information, please talk about the Paralympic Games, and hopefully, please enjoy the Paralympic. It must be exciting. Our small action can make a huge difference. Thank you so much for your time.
Thank you very, very much. And now we'll go to the judges first for questions. Uh, thank you very much. I'm from the Japanese Paralympic Committee. And so every day, think about how to promote the para sports activities, not only Japan, but also overseas. In that point of view, I was so uh, interested in your presentation. Thank you very much indeed. And the, in addition to the media and education, personally, I think about the role of athletes, mm -hmm. para-athlete, yeah. is also the very important. What do you think about it? Um, okay, I think that it's quite important to provide an opportunity for children to interact with Paralympians. Uh, these kind of opportunities are already done even now, but by including, like, you know, the Paralympic sport into the curriculum, I think it's make it happen more. And also because it's quite important for the children to know the real human who actively play the Paralympic sports. It gives them more dreams and hopes for children. And they can become the role model for children. That's why I think this, it, I totally agree that it's quite important for the Paralympic to also support this kind of movement. Is that your answer question? Is that answer true? Yes, perfectly. A role of, what, what did you Lo say? Lower model? Yes, yeah. that is, uh, I think that is my expectation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay, second question. All right, you, you begin your presentation with an image of the uh, recently victorious Japanese rugby team. <laughs> and uh, they certainly got a lot of media attention, which fits with the M in your ME strategy. Uh, and that reminded me of uh, a few years ago, there was a lot of attention to the uh, sport of curling, which is mm -hmm. otherwise obscure oh. because uh, mm -hmm. the uh, curling team happened to do very well in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So since uh, everyone likes stories of winners and finds them inspirational, what uh, para sports has Japan excelled in in the past? And if you were to give the media advice on where to look for stories about winners, what sports should they be looking at in the Paralympics? And are there any upcoming athletes who have uh, good medal potential? Sorry, uh, can I confirm? So you mean what kind of, uh, what? for media want in terms of para sports or? Right, well, it's uh, stories of winners are uh -huh. things that people like, the winning rugby team or the winning curling team. Uh, so surely Japan has won medals in the Paralympics in the past. So what have been Japan's best sports? Where are you likely to find stories of winners? What are the, the para sports Japan is the greatest at? Okay. Um, I think there are several sports, actually Japanese Paralympians are very strong, like um, maybe most of you know the Nishikori, who play really well in tennis, but uh, Kuni Eder, who is a very good player of wheelchair tennis, is actually getting champion several times. So I think these kind of sports exist, so that is, I hope that media that can focus on those like uh, area of sports, the Japanese players are really, uh, doing really good. Is that answer to your question? Uh, yeah, that's just what I was getting at. Okay, thank, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, judges. And we'll go to the audience. Does anybody have a question for our presenters? There's a lady at the very back, and also there's a gentleman over here on the left. So there's a lady at the back and the gentleman over here on the left. Hi, my name is Arika Hioki and from Keio University. Um, I enjoyed your presentation very much. I talked about the same topic. Mm -hmm. I talked Thank about sports for the disabled and the role of the media. Mm -hmm. So I felt some sympathy towards <laughs> you. Um, I think you mentioned that you will provide the children with the chance to play the sports actually and actively participate in sports. Mm -hmm. How will you provide the adults or the elderly or, well, mm -hmm. with the chance, with the um, same kind of opportunities? Um, I didn't mention about the opportunity for adults uh, who are not non-disabled to play power sports. What is more, what, what is most important things right now is to educate the children and uh, in school uh, sports festival, for example. And of course, the other parents will cheer children up and they can see what's, uh, what is the power of sports or so. And they can at least have interest. This is the most important thing I mentioned. Um, and in addition to that, this is the issue of prioritization. So what kind of people should be taught the 
as a first step because we can't do anything at all. Like we have to make prioritization in this instance. So I saw that the teaching children are most effective because when get the kind of experience in their childhood, those memories still exist and even they get adults. So that in long term, those children who get this kind of like education from Project E can possibly play sports in long term. Is this your is this answer to your question? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the next question was over here. Hi. So my name is Shota Yaguchi. I'm from Ritsumeikan University, Kyoto. Um, thanks for your very warm and kind <laughs> presentation today. Thank you. Um, I strongly argue with the education system that mm -hmm. you are trying to install. And my question here is, um, I think it is also important to train teachers as well, mm -hmm. because children are really innocent. They don't know much about the difference between, you know, Paralympics and Olympics. So I think it's important to um, teach from the grassroots, mm -hmm. but not like theoretically. Yeah. So how do you think about it? Yeah, about their um, teacher trainings. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, we can uh, ask the some schools at first to um, be uh, like a role model and just examine how to do and uh, we can uh, spread the same way to the uh, other school after the success of such role model and that's why so at the same time we can uh, give the lecture for the teachers also so mm. is it now yeah I'm wondering uh, um, how long have they been trying mm. to like examine? Yeah, so yeah. Um, what she implied was, of course we, um, in the Project E, of course, includes a kind of training for teachers. We are happy to invite uh, now kinds of like, you know, coaches or instructors, uh, which are exist presumably 250,000 in Japan. Then we can firstly, like in teachers, uh, we can first co collaborate with those coaches or instructors who already have kind of knowledge. And in long term, we can also happy to educate the teachers to give some sort of lectures or whatever necessary to make teachers realize what is important and how they should teach those kind of sports. Thanks, that's kind. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for a very heartwarming presentation. Thank you.